Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. We're here with another video and this time I'm going to show you how to use the Curves tool with Affinity Photo. Last week I showed you how to use the Curves tool with Pixelmator Pro. So for all Affinity Photo users, I'm also going to do the same video. So if you didn't watch my other video, let me discuss first what is the Curves tool. So Curves is a tool which allow you to make precise adjustments to brightness, contrast, and color. It is an alternative to these basic sliders here, like the brightness slider, shadows and highlights, or exposure. So it is an alternative to these tools. Now you might say, why would I even want to use this tool when these sliders seem to work fine? Well, there might be cases when these sliders do not give you the effect that you want. So for example, in Affinity, if you make the shadow adjustment like this, and the highlight adjustment like that, you might look at it and say, I wish the shadow adjustment didn't look like that. I wish it was focused more on this girl and less on this in this grass. So in that situation where the sliders are not working for you, the Curves tool is a great alternative. Now it is true that it is more complicated to use and for many years I was confused with the Curves tool. But over time, I've learned its value and that's what I'll be sharing with you right now. All right, so let's edit this image in the Curves tool now. So the first thing to remember is this one is a raw file. So because this is a raw file, when you open it, it brings you to this develop persona, which is the editor for raw images. So one unique thing about Affinity Photo is Affinity Photo has a Curves tool for both the develop persona and the photo persona. So obviously the Curves tool for the develop persona, because it works with the raw, has access to more dynamic range than the photo persona. So let's demonstrate that. So to, to bring out the Curves tool, you want to go into this Tones, Tones tab here. Now, if you don't see this, so you want to go to View, Studio, and then just choose Tones, and you should see the tab appear. So Curves, you just check on this Curves option here, and it'll bring out the Curves. One nice thing about this Curves tool is unlike in Pixelmator, you can actually drag it out and then just resize it. Right? So if you want to really see your curves super big, you can do that. I'll just put it back. So I'll just drag it back and it snaps in. So how does a curves tool work? Well, this line here represents all the tones in the image. So the leftmost point here represents the blackest point in the image and the rightmost point represents the brightest point in the image. You adjust the tones by dragging the point up or down. So let's say this black, so if I drag this point up, you can see that it will lighten the blacks, but it will also lighten other parts of the image. So same thing with the whites. If I drag it down, then I am going to decrease the whites, as you can see there. Okay. If you want to adjust the midtones, you can add a point here and just drag it up or drag it down to darken or brighten it. Good. So you can see that in the develop persona, you have access to the entire dynamic range. It can actually reveal even tones at the very darkest level. See that? Okay. And same thing with uh, darkening it. All right. So in the develop persona, the curves has access to more dynamic range. Now, how do you delete the point? You simply click on it and then just press the delete key to delete the point like so. Now, how do you make adjustments with curves? There are certain basic adjustments with curves that you just need to take note of. The most common ones would be the brightness adjustment, just basically creating a point here in the middle and just dragging it up. That's a brightness adjustment here. So it'll have an arc like this. That's a brightness adjustment. And conversely, if I drag it down like that, so that is darkening the image. So it is very good for overexposed images. Another very common form of the curve is what you call an S curve. So the S curve would enhance the contrast of an image. So to make an S curve, you simply make this, this line look like an S. So I'm just going to go down here and just lower it a little bit and then go up here, add a point here, and then just drag it up a little bit, right? So now you have what you call this S curve. So you're basically increasing the contrast of an image. So the other common type of curve you would use is what you call a reverse S curve. So the reverse S curve is the opposite of an S. So what you're doing there is decreasing the contrast, basically lightening the shadows and reducing the highlight. So you're just going to drag this up, lower it like that. 
So that is basically a reverse S. So how would I adjust this image then? Obviously, this image is already underexposed. Well, what we want is to brighten the shadows here. Perhaps we want to brighten the blacks of the image. So we can just put this point a little bit up, right? And then we can also adjust the brightness here, like so. But obviously, as we increase the brightness, the highlights here, the nice sky, it becomes overblown. So we can add another point, just reduce the brightening of the sky here, like so, and then bring that back. One thing to take note when using curves is you want to make sure your curve is smooth, all right? You don't want to have like abrupt changes like this. And you can see that you will see a lot of posterization. You're going to remove some of the tones in the image and it'll look really unnatural. All right, so one disadvantage of using curves in the developer persona is it does not work with overlays. So you cannot make local adjustments with curves. So for example here, if I, let's say, make this adjustment, right, in the overlay panel, right? And so let's say I just wanna brighten this lady up. So what I would do is go to tones and curves. You can see it's disabled. So you cannot make local adjustments with curves in the developer persona. So if you remember in my pixel meter video, you saw that this was possible. If you open up a JPEG or if you click develop in the develop persona, you're going to be brought to the photo persona. So the photo persona has its own curves tool, which is more powerful than the curves tool in the develop persona, but it just doesn't have the access to the raw format. All right, so let's do the same adjustment we did with Pixelmator and do local adjustments with this image here. So to bring up the curves tool, you just go to layer, new adjustment layer, and just click on curves like so. Okay, let me remove this. If you, you can also use a shortcut called Control M or Command M, and that'll bring you the, to the Curves tool. So you can see that the Curves tool here is a lot more feature-filled than the Curves tool in the Develop Persona. You can see that there's a histogram here and the like. Okay, so let's make adjustments to this image here. And so I'm just going to do a selection. Let's brighten up these shadows first. I'm just gonna do this selection like so. Okay, so once you've made the selection, you can actually just go to layer, new adjustment layer, and just choose curves. And that will that'll give you the mask. So once you have created this mask, you can now make the adjustment. Okay, so you just double click. That'll bring you the curves tool. Then you can just brighten it up like so. Okay, that's it. So you can see a little bit more detail here in this rocky formation. So if you want to correct things, you can just work with this mask right here and just paint white or black. Now, next, let's add some contrast to this foreground right here. So same thing, let's just do the selection first. Then we can just, we can add the curves tool, just Command M, Control M, and then we can, let's just create the S curve here. So an S curve will enhance the contrast of an image. So Let's just add the, let's just brighten that up and lower that a little bit. The steeper it is, of course, the more contrast it will have, but we don't want to overdo it, right? We want to keep the images looking natural. Okay, and finally, let's just lower the brightness of the sky right here. So again, just click on the quick selection brush and then just... All right, that's a decent enough selection. I'm sure, there, I'm sure you can always do better, you can do more work here. Okay, so once that's done, again, Control M or Command M, bring out the Curves tool, and let's just lower the brightness for this. There you go. So this was the before, and this was the after. This, so that is making local adjustments with curves in Affinity Photo. So as you've seen, the Curves tool in the photo persona is much more powerful than the curves tool of the develop persona because it allows you to work with local adjustments, it allows you to work with layers. Now, another unique thing about the curves tool of photo persona versus the develop persona is uh, it does have this picker option here. So if I want to make an adjustment to a specific tone in the image, you can actually use this picker tool here and just drag up on the area which you want to adjust okay so let's say this area here i'm just going to adjust 
So you can see that it has picked the point right here. No? So this picker tool allows you to pick the precise tone that you want to adjust. So that's just a nice feature that's available only in the photo persona. All right, so the last thing I'm going to be showing you with regards to the Curves tool is how to adjust color balance with the Curves tool. So again, let's bring up the Curves tool by pressing Command-M. And so since we didn't select anything, this, will, this adjustment will apply to the entire image. So in this image here, this is an image I took with an incorrect setting. It's obviously too warm and it's a JPEG file. So it's a little bit harder to adjust colors like this. But we're, we're going to use the Curves tool to make the adjustment to the, the color balance here. So because this image is too warm, what you want to do here is enhance the blues of this image to reduce the power of the warm tones. So to do that, you can work with the blue channel here. And you can just choose, instead of master, you just choose blue. Okay. And so what we're going to do here is just increase the blues, just the blues in this image to reduce the effect of the, the warm tones. So we're just going to drag this up. So you can see as I drag the blues up, it reduces the, the warmth in the image. Now, unfortunately, because you're adding, you're increasing the blue channel, you're actually going to overexpose some of these highlights, right? So to reduce that, what we can do there is just drag down these highlight areas here. So we're just going to drag down. So we're going to add another point here and then just drag down here, perhaps there, like so. So that's one thing you could do. Uh, another way to reduce the warmth of this image is maybe reduce the reds. So we enhance the blues, but now let's also reduce the reds of the image. Let's see if that helps. So we're going to re reduce it like so. And then let's just see if we can adjust the greens as well. Because it's a bit yellow, so I think adjusting the greens would do some good as well. And finally, maybe we can make some final exposure adjustments to this. So let's just go back to master here and let us just increase the shadows here and reduce the highlights. So it's like a reverse S for this. Okay, so this was the before and that's the after. Before and after. A big difference, don't you think? And that was just using the curves tool to adjust the color balance. So in summary, Affinity Photo is unique because it has two curves tool, one in Develop Persona to adjust raw images and the other in Photo Persona, which only works with JPEG images. The Photo Persona has the more powerful curves tool. So I recommend if you're working with raw and you need to use curves, just make the basic global adjustments first in the developer persona. And if you want to refine further specific portions of the image, you can always do that in the photo persona. So develop persona first, global adjustments, and then photo persona to make local adjustments with curves. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, I'd appreciate if you subscribe, like, and share this content to help keep the videos coming. And till the next video, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.